Pastor Belinda, you have to feature me on your next album. <laughs> Good evening to you all. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. I'm so excited and I'm so blessed to be your distinguished host for tonight. Uh, we apologize for the late start. Um, I had a little family emergency and I had to t attend to uh, one of my kids who wasn't feeling so well. Um, he's been crying <laughs> non-stop, so I had to just uh, go take care of him before coming on set. So please bear with me for starting late tonight. Um, so you're welcome to tonight's um, episode of Gospel City. As you know, Gospel City is brought to you by um, Faith Studios, Faith Event. Faith Event for all your event needs, party supply, decoration, uh, if you need a party space for your kids, um, party space for your little gathering, small gathering, please hit us up and we would help you. Faith event got all your needs um, ready to go, right? We take faith event to take care of your stress whilst you enjoy your event. And also faith studios for all your photography needs, uh, all your uh, broadcasting needs. Just let us know and we'll be right there to help you. So once again, welcome to tonight's discussion. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be um, amazing, powerful, exciting with two distinguished guests um, that I love so much. Um, so <laughs> I, know, I know they are on. Producer, are they on? One minute. Okay. So uh, I'm so excited to introduce you to uh, oh, thank you, Pastor. Pastor Reda says, I'm looking great. Thank you so much. I wish the light would be more bright to brighten up my face a little bit, but it's, it's still it's fine. Uh, thank you for watching, Pastor Reda. I see my sister Aman Poma is on, and also Ya yeah, Hatchet is on. Thank you all for joining us. Sister of Mami Mina is on. Thank you, Onya, <laughs> for always be there, being, I mean, watching us and supporting us. Thank you so much. Um, so if you're on, just send me a hello or hi, so I would acknowledge you. It's been a long time I saw Dick in Boat, Uncle Boat. Please, I've missed you. It's been a while. <laughs> I know Pastor Reda is here, and I'm sure probably you're like, listening through her phone, but it's it's been a while. With, oh, okay. <laughs> so uh, Uncle Boat just popped on. Thank you so much for, for joining us, Uncle Boat. Um, I saw you last week in church and your haircut was looking so good. So Pastor, I know Pastor Reda is doing a good job <laughs> keeping the maintenance. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. I look gorgeous. Thank you so much. I'm trying to be like Pastor Reda. All right. So, uh, <laughs> so tonight's discussion is on temperament and conflict resolution. So we're going to do something a little different tonight. Um, it's not going to be the usual questions and answers or interview. This time, Pastor Belinda and Apostle Shouders, they've agreed to share their challenges, how they were able to cope with each other's uh, differences. And I remember how Pastor, I was speaking to Pastor Belinda yesterday, she said that we learned it the hard way. So she's, she's willing to pour it all out to us tonight to hear um, to, he to let to hear I mean to watch and also learn from them. I am only five almost five years in marriage I know pastor pastor Reda and <laughs> Uncle Bota over 20 years. So they also have some experience They could also share in the comment section So if you are young like me or you are midway like me or even I know people who are over 30 years and still struggle in their marriage if you need some tidbits um, how to you know, freshen up how to make some changes, how to help your marriage and your, <laughs> what's the right? your, your spice up your, your relationship. You are welcome to also join in. So they're going to share with us what they both like and dislike about each other and how they, they've coped throughout the years. Also, they'll touch on the temperament and then also conflict resolution. Um, <laughs> so if you are here, thank you so much for joining and keep tuning. Um, please share, share the link. They don't, the link doesn't bite. Like Linda says, um, share the link, share to your friends, share to your, your, um, your family, your friends, your church members, share to everyone, uh, married or unmarried. They could learn one or two things from our guests tonight. So, uh, what? Okay. We're still, sorry, we're still waiting for 
um, Apostle Shelders and Pastor Belinda to join. I know they close from church and they do a lot. So let me maybe just a little bit about some of the um, community activities I've seen them do this weekend. So yesterday, Pastor Belinda and Apostle Shelders, they, they are leaders of the Love Legacy Church in Middletown, Walk Hill, actually Walk Hill, uh, Middletown, Upstate. They are the leaders, right? They are a couple, they are leaders also. So yesterday they went to one of their nursing homes in their area and they went to, they did like a, a worship night for them. I thought it was amazing. So they went to the, 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 the nursing home or the rehab centers as we call them and they had a very nice uh, praise and worship night with them which I thought was amazing. I've, no, I've never seen such thing maybe as it happens but I have never seen such a thing in the community before and I thought it was amazing and they also went in their community yesterday uh, morning to be praying for their community you know they move from house to house they open your door greet you and they say a word of prayer for you and they were also praying in the community as they were going around the place which I thought was amazing so keep up the good work uh, Apostle uh, Williams and Pastor Belinda Shelders they are amazing couple that I love so one of the people that I admire so much um, it's always exciting to be around them, you know. So thank you for all you're doing for the community, for the body of Christ. And they also have a university. Um, they have a university. So if you're looking to further your education from the de from first degree to a day on, keep going. <laughs> okay, I know they had they were having some technical um, issues, so. Um, I'm promoting them whilst we wait for them. But if you have any question, just send me send me something nice. Last week, uh, last week was my birthday, so if you didn't send me any message, send it to me now so I could read it. If you have anything, if you have any question, um, any um, insights about the topic, temperament, uh, conflict resolution. I know Pastor Pastor Veda is very um, also very. Uh, she's also endowed with the knowledge of temperament. One of her her. Um, favorite topics she likes to talk about it the melancholy she's always saying the melancholic and the phlegmatic and then the choleric and the sanguine uh-huh so <laughs> so if you if you have um some tidbit about the topic um they are four main okay they are on so i was going to go <laughs> go a little bit into into the topic they are four main temperaments you're going to learn maybe we'll touch base on them tonight we'll see how a melancholy and a sanguine can get to live peacefully you know the sanguine they are hey hey hyper always on fire and the melancholy are you know quiet reserve uh introvert and then the the, uh, the sanguine are the extroverts you know likes of mami mina type pastor raiders type and the melancholy <laughs> i like my type <laughs> so yeah so we're going to discuss how we can live at peace with each other especially enjoy our relationship enjoy our marriages while accommodating each other's differences you know so um producer says they are on now so i'm going to just keep quiet so i'm going to introduce them and then i'll i'll leave the the stage for them to continue and i'll come back with questions and answers so um pastor belinda Okay. Okay. All right. So they are Hello. on now. And I'm going to just introduce them briefly and then they will take over. They will, they will share with us what the Lord has laid on their heart to share with us tonight. And uh, afterwards, if you have any questions, please put it in the comment section. I know I have some questions for them already. If you have more questions, please put them in the comment section and then I'll come back to ask them. So you're welcome, Mommy and Daddy, Apostle Shelders and Pastor Belinda. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for making time to be with us. Like I said, it's always, I feel like, I, I always feel so sad to have, to bring you on because I know you're very tired, but I also love to also learn from you. My viewers also love to have you. So thank you so much. Um, you're welcome. Pastor Reda says, welcome, Mama and Papa. We are, we are ready to listen to you. So um, I know they are, they've been married for about, over 23 years or over over 23 years last week they mentioned it, how they met so <laughs> pastor belinda um invited apostle shoulders to su 
and then they became friends and then <laughs> and then they continue from there and today they are they are co-pastors of love Lever love legacy church um Le love legacy chapel so i'm just going to leave them to give us what the lord has laid on their hearts to share yes, with us tonight so the floor is all yours apostle and pastor belinda whatever you have for us please let it let, i mean let it go Thank you very, very much, much uh, Esla, Esla um, your, your husband, husband Dr. Francis, and the entire team at FBN. It's always, it's always uh, a, a great honor, you know, uh, to, uh, to come share uh, uh, the word with, with you. So, so uh, uh, it's, it's, it's yet another beautiful, beautiful opportunity, opportunity for us to do so. So, so um, um, without talking without much, talking, um, uh, I believe they, I believe the, they court the court talk about court today is on the conflict some resolution. Um, and, and so uh, we, we're going to be doing a little bit of back and forth. And, and uh, we'll, we'll try, try to be as transparent as possible. So, uh, you know, share, share some of our experiences with you. And, and uh, uh, not try, try to be fictional at all, all but... Uh, you know, be very well as much as possible. You know, uh, that way somebody can glean from our uh, personal experiences and, you know, things that we've gone through. Um, I want to start off by saying that, uh, again, as a follow-up to what we were talking about last week, uh, one of the biggest deceptions of uh, premarital relationship uh, I'll say uh, I would say two things. Two Number one, ignoring, ignoring the red flag. flag. You see a red you flag, flag. Now you know you, you just know you can't just cope with for the rest of your life, and you deceive yourself, yourself further by saying by that saying once that we once get married, get married I'm, I'm going to change, change, this change this person I'm married to. to. It's, a, it's lie. a lie. You can't change anybody. And because we live in that deception, we get into this highway after marriage. We get into this highway of doing everything possible, you know, to make sure that this person we are married to is, you know, uh, changed, which is which is just not possible. Uh, in in the old I can't say we say that it's very difficult to bend an old tree. Hmm. You know, when, when a tree is old, it's almost impossible to bend it. When you try to bend it, it breaks. And so uh, with that said, um, I also want to say that the scripture has laid down a foundation for how conflict needs to be addressed. In fact, Bible makes very clear and uh, it, it says that if a brother offends you, go to that brother or that sister and talk about it. It means that the best person to resolve your differences with is you. Uh, you and the person you are in a relationship with, not, not a third party. A third party would always come in in an extreme situation. But then uh, the two of you in the relationship have what it takes to you know, resolve your differences or conflicts, so to speak. Uh, again, it's also important to understand each other. It's important to... Uh, uh, in understanding each other, even understand the personalities, like you were saying earlier on. Uh, we all may have different in, in personality. Uh, and so based off our personality, the way we deal with issues would not necessarily be the same. But then the sad thing is that uh, you see couples holding each other to their standard. You know, uh, it means if this is the way I resolve issues, you must also resolve issues that way. And it doesn't really work for the most part. I remember listening to one of the great preachers of all time, uh, Pastor Matthew Ashimolo, uh, sharing some of his early days in marriage. Uh, you know, the wife knew he was a great man of God, a powerful man of God. And her standard of a powerful man of God is somebody that woke up before anybody would wake up like Jesus would do and pray for hours before getting to do anything. But after they got married, the wife was so frustrated for many years. And her frustration is that this man doesn't wake up till about 10 in the morning. And she's like, really? You are not even a Christian. 10 o'clock, you are still asleep. And when you wake up, 
I would expect that you would have woken up by five o'clock and be praying, yeah, pastor, for God's sake. And so it wasn't until after many years, the wife had to come to terms with the fact that, look, you are an early riser. My husband is a late sleeper. So whilst you go to sleep at uh, uh, 9, 10 p.m., he goes to bed maybe around 2, 3 in the morning. So you can hold him to your standard and uh, uh, start thinking that he should wake up the same time you wake up. You are both working on different time zones, so to speak. So I'm saying all these things to say that having a pure understanding of each other and communicating based on everybody's circumstance. The Bible says the two shall become one. It doesn't mean that we become one in the way we do things. It, it Remember, we are not in to compete. We complete each other. So there are things I do that you cannot do. There are things I bring to the table you can't bring to the table because I have it, you don't have it. And there are things you have I don't have. I must embrace that. I mean, it would be the most boring thing to have the two of us do the exact same thing, react the exact same way, have almost everything the same way. It would be the most boring relationship. But what tickles the relationship is the fact that you bring something on board that I totally have no clue of. I'm, I'm completely clueless about what you bring. And that is a beauty. You excite me when you do the things that I can't do. I'm a, I'm a teacher. I'm a preacher. My wife is a singer. She's a worshiper. I can sing. I don't have it. And so we, we complement each other. In that same way, she comes in with a medical background. I come in with my financial background when we begin to talk about stuff. She talks about cooking. She talks about putting spices together. I talk about marketing. And so about 10 years ago, we started a business and uh, she, she just loves food. She, she said one day in her spirit that, you know, it's time for me to, you know, put all these uh, spices and food that I, I've been doing over the years and package them and sell them. The moment she said it right away, without even me thinking, I said, if you put them together, I will sell them. And after she she started putting it together, myself and the kids got on board. We started working with her, making sure this product was finalized. And guess what? Once she was done putting them together, I was knocking on every single door. We were living in the Bronx at the time. I mean, I was in Fine Fair. I was in Sea Town. All the stores were selling our products because that is what I do. She does the food. I do the selling. So again, God puts two people together. Even at the beginning, you might not understand why God puts you together. But the worldly people will put it this way, that opposite attracts. But that is the way God meant it to be. That you have something I don't have. So what you have attracts me and what I have attracts me attracts you. So with that said, I'm going to let my wife talk a little bit. And then we're going to come back and open this whole thing up and talk about how conflict must be resolved. Yeah, thank you, Apostle. You spoke about a lot of things, conflicts, resolution. You see, just as our brains work differently, he has mentioned a lot of stuff. I cannot go through the way he's gone through. I have to take it one by one. And that's how we operate. He has mentioned a lot of topics. He spoke about seven, about seven things. <laughs> really? I didn't even realize I had said that much. <laughs> and that's how his brain works. But I have to take it one by one and analyze it. Ten years. I have to take it one by one and analyze it. So he spoke about conflict resolution. I remember when I was in tech, one day he told me he was coming to visit me. And that day I had really, really planned my weekend. Because we go for rehearsals, we had programs to attend on. And once I'm on campus, I focus on campus activities. I wasn't expecting a, a visitor to <laughs> come and visit me. So he came to visit me and I ignored him. When he came, he, he has friends on campus. So when he came, I left him to his friends. They were together. And he sent his friend to come and call me once. I told him, oh, Eddie, I'm busy. I told him not to come because I was fully booked for that Saturday. Eddie came the second time. I told Eddie to go tell him I was busy. All right, can I, can I interject? <laughs> what she's talking about is 28 years ago. All right, but I don't remember she telling me I shouldn't come. 
we were dating at the time. So it's a point of correction. And, and I'll come back to talk about that. All right, let me see. Let me finish. <laughs> Excuse me. So after I finished my activities, I didn't finish anyway. I said, okay, let me go see him. I got there. He was angry. I mean, anger is an understatement. He was furious. If it's not maybe because he had the Holy Spirit at that time, if, if he had the opportunity, he would like beaten me like but a child. Honestly, <laughs> honestly, guys, I wanted, I wanted to think to about this scenario. We are dating. I hardly see you. I travel. I, I, let me go back a little bit. I work from Monday to Friday. I was doing a busy job. I was working at Labadi Beach Hotel as their uh, cost controller. I do Monday to Friday and think about it. On Friday after work, I didn't go home. I went straight to church. We did an all night. An all night is not New York all night. You start from nine, you finish at six in the morning. That is what is called all night in those days. And right after six o'clock, I go home, take a shower, and bam, drive four hours to Kumasi to come see you. And you are busy doing rehearsal. You can't even come to say hello. I'm doing spiritual things. Really? We'll talk about this. So he was so furious, extremely furious. Eddie would talk to him. He had another friend that he actually came with. He also came to see his girlfriend. And the friend would talk to him. Nobody would. He would not even listen to them. He was so furious and expressing his anger that he came all the way. And I, I, I didn't like. I was like, okay, I didn't ask you to come. You came. <laughs> you, you decided to come for your for your agenda. Really? And I also have my agenda. So, so at the end of the day, I realized that no, Eddie's effort won't work. Zoro was the friend's name. Effort won't work. And I told Eddie and Zoro. Leave him for me. Let me handle him. So we, I took him and I took him to Great Hall. We, we have a little place there. And I sat him down. First, first of all, I took him to Pajo, the park. There were too many people there. And I said, no, this guy, I need to put him in a quiet place and <laughs> let him go quiet. So I took him to Great Hall. And then I told him that, listen, I told you not to come. And you came. I had plans. I have to sing because that, that's my passion. I'm so passionate about it and I'm obsessed with singing. So I spoke to him. It took him some time, but finally he came down and everything, you know, but <coughs> the reason why I'm talking about this is the conflict resolution that he mentioned. I tried. Zoro tried. Everybody tried. It did not work. But when I tried it, it's wet. So the Bible says that when there is conflict to resolution, go to the person first. You must know the person. You must know the a draw the medication that you need to give to the person. If you don't know the medication, I'm not talking about me touching him, but it was just talking. I told him you need to uh, uh, um you need to understand me because I'm in college and these are the people that if you leave me with, I will still have to go back to them and they need my services. So I cannot withdraw my services from them at this time. And I, I'm sure some of you know him, brother stuff. We used to sing all over campus, everywhere. And I was like his supporter. So, but at that point, he wanted me to neglect my community that I had built to cling to him. But we not knowing, I mean, I was acting in ignorance and that's, I'll, I'll talk for myself. I was acting in ignorance, but knowing today that he drove all the way to come and see me. Well, I was spiritual and that is what spirituality does for us in relationship. Sometimes we are over spiritual and we forget about the physical that matters. You want to say something? Yeah? Well, um, <laughs> you see, um, that was then i i believe given the opportunity we would both do things differently um i i used to easily get angry uh, i do still get angry and um now i know better bible says do not let the sun go down your anger and i understand that now any anger past 24 hours is an expired anger 
because Bible makes that very clear. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. Okay. And when he's angry, he does the yes, no business. No, no. It's, yes. it's, it's, no. the man listening to me understand. When you get angry, your vocabulary becomes reduced. You know that. <laughs> Everything is yes, no. Yeah, it's reduced to just two. <laughs> uh, and, and so uh, for me, and, and again, we, we process things differently. And that is why last week I said that what you think is a major concern in a relationship might be a minor thing in another relationship. And what do you think is a minor thing in another relationship may be a major thing in a, another relationship. So you can't even put value or effect of uh, things that could potentially happen in a relationship because we react to things differently, you know. Uh, and, and even with that said, the way I react to something today might not be the same way I will react to that same thing down the road because, uh, again, we change. Circumstances become different. Our response to you know, actions become, you know, different based on what we are going through, even as at the time those situations happen. So with that said, uh, I tell you what, I was furious when that thing happened. I hadn't slept and it was several hours. I had waited for so many hours. I can't even recall how long it was. It took her maybe close to five hours after I had arrived for her to come see me. And it, it was it was just uh, it, it caused me to even get even more angry. The long my friends, and I'm like, where is she? Why won't she come and see me? And then my friends were apologizing. Oh, she has rehearsal, and I'm like, how long would a rehearsal take? You know, and she wouldn't even come and see me just to say hello. And honestly, all I wanted was to see her face. Oh, really. <laughs> <laughs> and then I mean, she would cool my heart and say, I'm going to do this and come back. And she wasn't coming. And I was angry because I knew she knew what I had gone through to be in Kumasi. And then for her to ignore me like that, I was like, what is going on? My God is greater
Okay, lift my eyes, lift my voice. Okay, thank you for staying, uh, still staying on with us. So it was a very powerful, <laughs> hot, hot, hot um, discussion between Apostle and Pastor Belinda. And I, we don't know what happened. The, uh, the, tech, the, the technology had a little glitch, so um, we couldn't hear them anymore. But they are, they are reconnecting to join us. I just wanted to come on to just... Um, hold hold the time, hold the thought, and and then also try to um, keep you on while they reconnect. So there were so many interesting comments in the <laughs> in the session, the comment session. Pastor Linda says, reduce vocabulary from the men when angry. Very true. <laughs> um, and so Mami Mina says over spiritual for no come around. Why? So it's not every time that we over spiritualize. Sometimes you have to come to the physical and handle things physically, you know. Uh, and then, yeah. So we couldn't hear you for a while. Daddy, I, I think I saw you asking if we can hear you. Um, but we couldn't hear you for a while. But hopefully when you join, we'll be able to hear you. Um, so please come back on. Don't leave. I, saw, I know there were a lot of us on but uh most of them most of you have left please come back on and we're going to continue the conversation um is apostle and pastor belinda on yet no okay so if you have any any uh comments all my comments 
I can't find well I don't know I don't know where uh, the comment yeah okay so I'm trying to see if I could see some of the comment that came out earlier but I restarted my vid my Facebook page so I think all the comments I can't see everything on okay so they are on now and they're joining us in a bit where is pastor belinda my producer says where is pastor belinda <laughs> um okay i can't see a lot of oh okay good i see all the comments now right so uh pastor Rada was saying earlier on that um you are right apostle third person at times makes it worse and sometimes helps but when both conflict is when you be solve the conflict is better and pastor Rada was calling her, her husband hot cocoa sugar milkshake hey <laughs> so uncle boat that's for you from pastor Rada. She, she says you are her hot cocoa sugar milkshake okay uh pastor linda says good communication count uh making good of the business yes yes so i've tested uh pastor belinda's zoe shito it's also anybody who, who tested it wanted more so if you want zoe shito contact me or contact pastor belinda and she would um send some to you it's it's sweet and she does the spices not the common spices that we have this one exotic. she has a local and exotic spices so if you want american spices or you want nigerian or you want local caribbean ghana spices um she she's got you she has a whole big factory that produces um shito and spices and it, it's so sweet um okay we all have our own ambitions and characters yes so that is where the indifferences are uh, indifferences comes in because we are different from different backgrounds we have our different ambitions different characters we need wisdom you know and discernment we need the spirit of god to help us uh, to be able to manage each other's differences and still live in peace appreciate each other's um, differences and still live in peace um are they on now okay we're waiting for pastor belinda do you want to bring apostle on maybe they're using i didn't know using one okay yeah maybe we can have daddy on for now but i was enjoying i don't know whether i was the only one enjoying their fight <laughs> you know but i think i agree with apostle you know driving all the way after about eight hours of of <laughs> all night after eight hours of all night and driving all the way to kumasi and then being told that oh i'm in re i'm in rehearsal so i cannot see you ah if it was me can come our ball <laughs> okay so i see pastor belinda on this apostle joining us too Oh, you can go ahead. Okay. Yeah, I so I think we have to send another link to Apostle. Because it looks like uh, Pastor Belinda is on Apostle's link now. Okay. So we will send another link to uh, Apostle Shoulders. But mommy, if, you, if you, you're good to go, you can pick it up from where you left. We will send another link to okay so i think we are having a little um tech issues the bible says it's true do not put your trust in any man not even on me. <laughs> let your presence Fall on me, let your presence fall.
Lord, we need it tonight to help solve all the stake issues. Yeah, so, <laughs> all right, so Pastor Belinda is on, Apostle is trying to connect, so we'll bring uh, Mommy on to, to pick up from where she left whilst Daddy connects with us too. Okay, okay. so, yes, please, so Mommy, go ahead, wherever you, you left off, please pick it up <laughs> from there. <laughs> yes, so I would continue. He was speaking about legitimate jealousy. Mm. Yes, it's true, there is legitimate jealousy because every woman once you the bible says that you leave your father and your mother and you cleave to your husband so once you cleave to your husband you leave your father and your mother and you give your love to some and giving your love to somebody <coughs> it means that you're giving your all to him and it is okay for the man to talk to other women but the amount of time spent with the person is very important because he had uh, at that point when he was angry that's our our big scenario so we are using it to answer a lot of questions when he was angry and when i was talking to him, he was asking me so are you in a really are you in a relationship with somebody are you in a, because he he was kind of like angry and also suspecting that i was into a relationship with somebody and because i was spending more time and i didn't have time for him because he had come from accra let me bring it to current days. There are some men that spend too much time on their phone chatting with women. They spend their time. I mean, your wife, you have a wife at home. Why are you chatting extended, extended hours with people that are not your wife? Why do you spend that time building your, <coughs> excuse, excuse, building you and your wife's relationship instead of trying to help people? Last week, I had mentioned that some people come with their marital problems and to the pastors and know that the pastors are married. They stay with the pastors for hours and they, they don't pastor any way. It's like you are texting him, you are calling him. Come on. No, no, your lane. The pastor is married. What do you want from him? Stay there. Because I, I, I would express myself. I don't really care because I know who my husband is. I know him but when he's spending extra and extra time with people i caution him i am human i cannot say that be spiritual i should allow him people to be bugging him what why are you texting my husband at 2 a.m come on go to sleep he's not 911 that even on the um or the hospital um calls it says that if there's an emergency down 911 my husband is not 911. So we should know our limits. People should know their, their limits and where they belong. So a jealousy is legitimate, especially if you are in a relationship. But that doesn't also, <coughs> excuse me, that doesn't also mean that you should not allow your husband. But listen, you are married. Why are you hugging a woman for five minutes? Why, why, why do you hang on to her? What are you doing in her body? Go for years. You know, people should know their limits and know what to talk about, know how to act. Because once a man is taken, he is taken. I know of not only one man, but I've had a lot of we've done a lot, we've of, done a lot of counseling for people that there came, came for counseling. And, and by the time, time they finish the class, by the first second counseling, the pastor that is missing has already fallen for the woman and starts sleeping with the woman that is there for refuge. It's off. It's yours. You have to revise this open. So, so the shepherd had a sheep come Makes the, makes the sheep, sheep lamb chops. Start eating, Start eating the, sheep. the sheep. And, and that is not fair. fair. So, so we, 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 we have to know our, our limits as Christians. Because at that point, he was thinking that I was in a relationship I was with somebody, somebody who 
was was taking, taking my time. time. And that, that is why I wasn't calling him the time that, that, that he needed. But it wasn't that, but it was legitimate for him to behave that way, to be angry. Because he is human. All right. Okay, so you have to mute yours. Um, we are sorry about that. We have multiple devices at the same time, so we keep getting feedback. Um, uh, so again, talking about legitimate jealousy, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I finished that portion before we had we had the internet challenges. Now, legitimate jealousy is, is something that is obvious in every true relationship. Legitimate jealousy. I'm jealous not because you're doing anything, but uh, I'm jealous because I love you and I want you all for myself. It's called legitimate jealousy. And that's a kind of jealousy anyone that is in a true relationship will feel towards each other. That's not a negative jealousy. It means I love you. I want to be with you. I want to have your undivided attention. I want you all for myself. It's a selfish kind of uh, jealousy. But then it's needed to keep that relationship going because if you don't have any element of jealousy, even God himself says it, that I'm a jealous God. So jealousy is not an evil thing. It's what you do with that jealousy that makes it evil. And so when you truly love somebody, you're going to feel jealous. Uh, and of course, uh, there are extremities of jealousy. There are people that get outrageous when people are even looking at their spouses and stuff like that. And there are degrees of uh, terrible jealousy you could bring your spouse to when you don't draw uh, boundaries for your relationship, which uh, my wife was just talking about in a moment. You, you got to have boundaries. You got to know when you stop picking up calls. I mean, how are you going to pick a call whilst you are having a quality time with your spouse? Uh, you are not 911, like she rightly said. If it's emergency, they can call 911. And that is where pastors most of the time miss out. Uh, you spend a lot of time with church members at the expense of your wife, at the expense of your children. And the same church members will complain about your kids and your marriage if things don't turn out right. But then we fail to recognize that our first focus should be God, but beyond God is your family. Your family is your first church before the community at large, which is the church, uh, the body of Christ. But you and your spouse and your children becomes the first church. And uh, you, you cannot... Uh, leave that first church and go to build the uh, greater church. It starts with the church, which is your family. So with that said again, uh, when we want to deal with conflict between spouse, uh, we, we cannot hold each other. I was trying to articulate that before. You cannot hold each other to uh, each other's uh, standard. You know, it's just like people that are in all, indulging in all kinds of sin. But then they are quick to talk about other people's sin. And, and the reason is because those people don't sin like the way they sin. And sometimes we must realize that the fact that you don't sin like the way I sin doesn't make your sin better than my sin. Because Bible says all sins are sin. So with that said, what I truly wanted to articulate is the fact that um, if I treat conflict a certain way i don't have to expect my wife to treat it that way my wife may be the type that would uh you know want to address issues as soon as they happen i might be the type that want to wait till late in the night or early morning to wake you up and talk about it we got to respect each other's uh way of addressing conflict and come to a, a middle ground where it works for both of us and it's the reason why i think that marriages work and a lot of people don't want to do the work, and that is why we run into problems. This is the way I resolve conflict. So whether you like it or not, you are angry right now. You can't walk out of the door. You have to come. 
you have to come so that we talk about it but you know very well that it's only going to escalate the situation your spouse is not going to heal through it you're not going to get anything fruitful from it so where is the common ground and it requires a lot of work what is the work that i'm talking about you of yourself will want things addressed right now but the work you need to do is to exercise what is called patience and patience is a virtue and it's work in progress when it comes to resolving conflict if you are not willing to do some work to you know uh tame your pride tame your arrogance tame your uh, uh anger and all these emotions that flies around when when especially when you feel justified you feel you are right and so we have to talk about it, it right now i got to point it out to you that you were wrong and i tell you what until we understand what is forgiveness we can never resolve conflict because you don't have to win every situation this is the way jesus puts it they came to ask jesus peter how many times would a brother offend me and i forgive him and jesus said well uh what do you think he said seven times Jesus said no 70 times seven my understanding of that scripture 70 times seven translation forgive till you lose count because how many times are you going to take a record and 70 times 7 is 490 times of that same offense how many times how are you going to be able to record 490 times of the same offense being recorded you can so what jesus meant was that you got to forgive until you lose count and i'm thinking about it this way bible says god has given us 70 years to live if you get to 80 it's a blessing now what that simply means is that jesus say you must forgive 70 times seven seven is a place of the holy spirit a man is to live 70 years it means for 70 years you must forgive me and seven under the inspiration of the holy spirit when the holy spirit tells you to let go let it go I know that might be a difficult thing when you sometimes feel you're so right, you're so justifiable, and you got to push it under her throat and make her know how wrong she was. You want to prove a point. But then that is where true love comes in. Let me come in and um, proving the point is kind of like it's a man's thing. So uh, no matter what, it's fine. You always want to prove a point, and the point is the point. And sometimes the men will, will never take it that okay. So, some of the things that I have learned from Apostle through the years, you not tell you that you so, so since he did not tell you that you win and you prove his point, I tell him, okay, you win. I concur. I concur. <laughs> when I tell him that he takes it to another level of seriousness because already i'm annoying him <laughs> we are, we are yeah, I mean, so my winning, what do you mean so i always use reverse psychology <laughs> on him before i start i tell him that well i know you might not agree with me but i, I have to say what i want to say because initially when we hadn't grown to this point when he says it okay i listen when he finish i say mine but i never win so now this is it I tell, I tell him that, that listen to me i'm going to tell you what i want to tell you you can either take it or leave it it's not a force so when i say that way already i've already cooled him so you don't know what to say we must always know that one thing men will never agree either they win and that is my apostle for you he's my husband but that lies but listen <laughs> Even though you all agree, sometimes I, I, I bring um, something to the table. I bring a, a suggestion to the table. You don't accept it. One of his first instincts is always no. no. That is one of his first instincts. You don't even listen to it. You don't process it. His first instinct is no. And I know that after some days, you come back with the same thing. But it has to be said by him. And sometimes, and sometimes why right, they that, oh, I have won. won. But I don't, I don't tell him I've won. I wait for him to finish. And I say, oh, three days ago, they didn't write it. So, so that is not the way he said it. Which means that, yes, it's headed differently. 
They are just trying to tell you how real it is. is. They are all different. We pass things different. differently. And, and he's not the only one. I've met people that anytime, anytime you suggest anything to them, their first is no. My boss, anything you suggest to her, her first instinct is no. But after a few hours, hours she comes back to uh, agree with you. But she doesn't tell you about agree with you. She reformulates it in her head and comes to tell you her own way of doing it. So he's not the only one. But that is his uh, peculiar and uh, unique character. Which is uh, I'm glad I'm glad she added the personality thing because um, she started off by saying that it's a man thing. I'm sorry. Uh, I know she started off by saying it's a man thing. Yes, most men might show that, but I think it's more of a personality thing. Um, Cholerics are very competitive. They must win. They feel everybody is wrong and they are the only ones that are right. I'm just trying to help you. If you are dealing with somebody that is uh, a choleric, that is their mindset. Uh, fortunately, that is the way God created them. It's not that they want to be like that. Uh, that is how God created them. Can, can you guys hear us? If somebody can say something for us to know if you can hear us or text something. Do you hear us? Us? All right. I know you can hear us. All right. Thank you very much. So what I was trying to say is that it's very important to understand the personality of your spouse. Because when you understand the kind of personality they are, Meaning that is how God created. The Bible says we have been fearfully and wonderfully created, including our personality. Sad to say, we do not only inherit the good looks of our parents. We also inherit all their bad characters, their bad traits, their bad personality. Every personality has good and bad side. Uh, just like cholerics are, you know, go-getters, they are visionaries, they are natural-born leaders and what have you. Cholerics are also bossy. They want to win every argument. Whether they are wrong or not, they got to win. And so personality comes into play. Uh, which might not be the same with other personalities like the phlegmatics who are peacemakers. Uh, they, 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 they don't expect much uh, from life. They, they can do one thing over a long time. They cannot multitask. They can only do one thing at a time and stuff like that. Every personality is so unique and it's so key that you get to understand the personality of your spouse because that will make you understand why he behaves the way he behaves. And then also it makes you get to a place with him where you understand that, you know what, this is how he is. This is how he's going to be. He can never change. The only way he can change is when the spirit of God steps in uh, to deal with all the negatives in his personality because that is his trait. But we must also understand that every personality is flawed. That is why all the personalities have their negativities. And that is where the Holy Spirit comes in. You can change that. In fact, when you try to change that, you are resisted. You, you, they build a wall of resistance because you are not the one that changes character. It's a manufacturer that is able to change the defaults in the unit that was produced. And the manufacturer is God. And so he's the only one that is able to bring the change. So with that said, yes, when we have argument, um, or we have differences or, you know, an issue at stake, for the most part, I am quick to say no, especially when she comes up with something. Uh, my immediate response, and uh, it's so funny she's saying that because she would even say that with people that she knows have similar personality uh, uh, with me. They have my kind of personality. Anytime you will bring anything to the table, they are like, no. And the reason why they say no is because they believe that they have the best idea. And so your idea, it's not going to count. You know? So again, uh, my wife will make statements like narcissist personality. That, that's a narcissist personality. Yes, that, that is how uh, the mindset of a narcissist sometimes is. But then again, we must also understand that even though that personality is flawed and it's not perfect, there are good things in the choleric. They, they make things happen. 
they are the ones that ensures that the agenda is fulfilled. So they have great things going also for them. And so with that said, I want to make that clear statement that you cannot begin to resolve conflict when you don't even understand the personality of your spouse. Mm -hmm. Having a good understanding of them will make you understand why they're thinking the way they're thinking and why they are acting the way they are acting. And it makes the conflict resolution work out better because then you know you're not going to come in an aggressive way because they're going to uh, be, become very repulsive yeah. to you. They will be extremely repulsive if you're dealing with a, a, a choleric and you're coming, shooting your missiles and what have you. They're going to build a wall of hostility, a wall of defense, and attack you right back because that is their personality. They fight. They fight because they want to win. They fight because they know they're going to win. They fight because they, they understand they can never lose anything. They have to win in all kind of situations. So you must find what my wife said. It is called reverse psychology. Come the opposite way. And that is what why you will win in that situation. That is why they will pay attention to you. You don't come in making a choleric feel that whatever they are doing is stupid and they don't make sense and you have something better than them. No, they are the best. They are superior. You, There is nothing beyond what they know. So you cannot come that way. And again, as a wife, if you are melancholic and you don't know how to communicate with your husband on that frequency, you are always going to have to deal with a situation of aggression from your spouse because you feel he never listens to you. No, is the way you communicate him. Okay. And I also want to come in here about relationships where um, spouses lie. They, they never tell their wives the truth. Everything about them is, is and it's, it, it's not healthy. When, as a husband, as a husband always you always lie to your wife the truth. It's always good to be plain, open, truthful. I always tell my husband that when he comes to church members, he's nice and sweet and cool and calm. But when he comes to me, he's not nice, sweet, cool and calm. He treats me with all the rigorousness, the roughness, and everything that that <laughs> excuse me, church members will do that he will not react. Right, right in, front in front of you, of you, you would react to me, to me and, and even sometimes it takes a, a, at first, now, now things have changed, change. believe me, at first it would okay. get angry, angry, very angry, angry and, and takes a, we call it cold war, five, five days, days, one mm -hmm. week. And, and but the thing is that, that just as you said, some, some uh, yeah, personalities some don't like to accept the truth. Um, um, like, like there were there certain was rules that we didn't hear myself yeah, so made me, when we got married. Those, Those times there were no cell phones. Phone. So after, after 10 o'clock, no more attendance to church members. One of One the of things, things was, was do not put a church member in your, your car, car alone, alone, especially a female by, by yourself. Yourself. And, and the reasons why. why? We all know, know the mechanics the between men and women. It doesn't take anything. Truthfully, it doesn't take anything to have sex. And when it comes to sex, it doesn't matter whether it's a child, it's an adult, it's a man and daughter. If it, it, it matters, then there will be incest. But it just happens. So when it comes to the mechanism between a man and woman, a lot of things can happen. We said, do not pick any, any woman, woman in your, your car by yourself. Sometimes it happens that, that maybe once in a while, while you, you just cannot help it because we all help at the church and you have and to have pick to a, a sister home and a brother home. home. I remember back home in Ghana, there's this brother who used to, after rehearsals, he used to go and drop the women in their various homes. And there was a time that there was a fight in the among all the ladies in the choir. Everybody left the choir for me. And I didn't understand. Not when this brother would have turned all the sheep into lamb chops. He was chopping all of them. And so all the girls come and they were fight. And I was I was left alone in the choir. Why? Because the same thing, he go and drop them off at home. They get home very late. And they entered in, he entered into relationship with all these girls. So <coughs> We should 
be truthful to ourselves as human beings that the mechanism between a man and a woman always calls for something some giddiness in the body and some elements some um, hormones running through so we need to be careful if you're a brother and you're in a church and it's not only in Ghana here when I came here look, I have seen a lot a lot of young women they go drop people before they realize they, they enter into relationship with them after church service and it's just spiritual people but when it comes to physical sense emotions no nothing can stop it so be truthful to yourself and also when it comes to relationships be plain I lie I went to do this at this time I was here I did this let your spouse know the moment she calls, she calls you and you don't pick up the phone. phone. Anywhere anyway, I go. I, 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 <laughs> so, so, knowing no, a person's personality, sometimes, sometimes when I'm just doing certain stuff, I don't want him to know. know. Because but when he comes, he brings his personality, personality, which I don't, I don't want, want to. I don't, I don't want it to manifest in whatever I'm doing. I just want to do it on the quiet, on my own, peacefully. After it's manifested, you will see it. So sometimes I'm somewhere doing something, you call me, I will not pick up the call. And one of the tricks that where we've gotten to now, you see, I've called you 100 times, you are not responding. So call me the 101th or 102nd time, I would respond. Very funny. But that's just knowing each other. We are truthful. And sometimes I just tell him, I don't want you to know because you bring in that. And forceful energy, which I don't want to appear or I don't want to manifest it at this point of the projects that I'm trying to accomplish because he's a go getter. My head of us. All right. So um, I don't know if there are questions um, for us to address, but I believe we've laid down some foundations to how we resolve our conflict. And uh, there are a bunch of, you know, uh, things that could cause a conflict in any relationship. It could be, um, you know, nice. lies. It could be finance. It could be moral issues. And uh, I thank God for one thing in our relationship. Mm -hmm. Right from the time of dating, we had extensive communication. I remember I used to live with two brothers, uh, my two closest friends, uh, uh, pre-marriage and uh, when when uh, my wife would come visit me in those days whether she was spending an hour or she was spending five hours there was never a dull moment if she was spending five hours the whole five hours we could talk and we always had something to talk about I remember my friends who asked so how do you guys do it they be, uh, you guys are always talking you always have something to talk about what do you guys talk about it's always been like that. We've been married. This, I guess, is going to be our 25th. And we've been friends for 30 years. And uh, it's it's been the same, you know, uh, till today. I mean, I would tell you on the average, uh, whether she's working, I'm working, we're both working. No matter what the situation is, we communicate on the average anywhere between five to six hours a day. If there are no phones, we text, we email. Uh, whatever the situation, there is no situation that stops us from communicating. I mean, she's worked in a jail for some time now. And uh, in a jail, they don't allow them to take their cell phones. That wouldn't stop us. Uh, we would email. I mean, I felt emails were, you know, old school. But it wasn't until she started working in a jail about two or three years ago, we started emailing seriously. We were emailing by the minute. You know, so with that said, you know, even when I'm at work, I have my Bluetooth on. My work allows me to be able to communicate. And if she's home at work, sometimes before we realize we've been on the phone for two hours and not just being on the phone, we are talking, communicating, discussing mm -hmm. issues because marriage is not emotion, like I said last week. It's fulfilling of purpose. And we have so much in common, so much we're doing together in fulfilling purpose. And so uh, that is also another reason why it makes conflict easy to resolve because uh, you, you can't carry over conflict for too long because there are too many things at stake, too many divine purposes. For me to say, I'm angry, I'm not talking to you for two, three days. No, we got to fix this thing right now and move on because there are things that we are dealing with that uh, has the lives and destinies of people at stake. We, we don't have time to hold grudges. Uh, and let me come in here. So when he's upset with me, 
the first thing he comes with is a bell. You know, we need a flyer. You know, the website is this. You know, this is this. <laughs> <laughs> he always comes in with a job. So once, uh, let's say that when there is cold war, I also go on war. It's not only him. I also go on war because I want my needs met. <laughs> so when there's cold war and he comes in, you'll be like, oh, the moment he says bell, I say, oh, what do you want? That's always my, what do you want? What do you want me to do for you? Because I've realized that over the years, anytime that he's coming in after his war, he comes in with a job. So I'm ready to take on the job. And then I just, you, we just have to make it work in a way, continue. <laughs> yeah, yesterday we had a community outreach. We did a um, uh, community match. Uh, we decided in March, we're gonna be going into the community. So we were in all the governmental buildings praying over the prison, praying over the city hall. We went into the uh, courthouse, the schools, you know, the churches, the business district praying. I know we had a great time after that. Our youth ministry went into the um, nursing home in a community to minister to them. We led them to Christ. We had such a powerful time. And then we tired. We were on our way home. I, I think it was right around six, seven o'clock. I was tired. I couldn't wait to get home. And uh, we got into a little argument in the car. And, uh, you know, I just kept quiet. You know, I got upset, so I just kept quiet. And then when we got home, we didn't even have to discuss the issue. I'm like, do you want us to go out for dinner? And then she goes, whatever. I said, really? I tell you, we had one of the best dinner yesterday. Uh, we went out. We had a great time. A uh, beautiful dinner. We spent uh, about two hours in a restaurant having a beautiful dinner. And I tell you, when we got home, we had dinner. Now, if you are grown, you know what dinner I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. God bless your heart. Now, I think we should open up for some questions, folks. We can't be talking like that. Miss mm -hmm. Moderator Esla, you can't be taking that long break. <laughs> 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 You have to go and lock the kids in some room with Pastor Francis and come back right here. Come <laughs> back right here. <laughs> All right, producer, give her a minute. You put her on too quickly. She's fixing her stuff. I'm the I'm the second producer, so I have to talk. <laughs> That's why, so you think I don't look like I fight for you. Are so you talking about mommy? I don't know who you're referring to. <laughs> yes, brother Kokubuatin, there was dinner part after dinner, in case you want to know. If you call me, I'll tell you that kind of dinner. That one is uh, another level. We really had dinner after dinner. I tell you, it was powerful. And uh, it's called SOJ. That's what the Bible called it. Shouts of joy. SOJ. <laughs> oh, I was just laughing and laughing and laughing. Let's go ahead. Thank you so much, mommy and daddy. Um, you shared so much, you know, you open up to us, you shared your challenges. Usually, a lot of leaders like to show their crowns, but not the, the how is it called, um, the wounds, right? But you've showed us both sides, the, the crowns. We see the beautiful crowns always uh, in, in on, I mean, in, uh, maybe on social media or upstage, but now you are telling us the wounds. So thank you so much for opening up to us. And I mean, I also like to know the dinner after the dinner, <laughs> you know, <laughs> when, <laughs> when, you were, when you were saying, I was telling Pastor Francis, I would like to know what happened after the dinner. And then you added you that. You want the other dinner. <laughs> but you need the first dinner to have energy to have the second dinner. Oh, yes. <laughs> right. Yes. That the second dinner is in a whole new level. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh -huh. Yes, we've learned a lot from you tonight. There were two questions for you. 
The first question was, how do you handle um, a possessive husband or spouse who always wants you around them? So let's say the woman is um, in leadership. So usually she will be around people, but her husband um, is not comfortable with that. How do you handle such, such a spouse? So I said, I told him to let me answer because I, I tend to experience that a lot. The first thing that I say is that that is his ministry. First of all, that is his ministry. And I've worked in the <laughs> excuse me, OBGYN before, where the doctor only sees women. And all he does is to go into their privates. And not only going in, he follows with every part of the woman. That is a man. Should he not perform his work? Should his wife come around and say that, don't, don't touch this, don't do that? And she will get money. The, the, the family will not, will, not, will not get money. Because that is his source of living. But that is why the Bible says that the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, and goodness, kindness, and self control. So, men. Either it's a man or it's a woman, you need to exercise self-control and know where profession is drawn from marital relationship. That's his profession. He has to take care of people. Men the also, also the reason why people are free, and, and the first thing we discuss is like this jealousy. And the other thing is that some women also, they, 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 they are so possessive of people's stuff. It's your husband. When, when it is a I remember, I remember a pastor, a pastor told us about how, how there was this woman in the church. church. Every, Every time, time, no, let me, let me not even go there. This one was on TV. Uh, what's, what's his name? name? We call him Will Smith. Smith. Yes, Will Smith and his wife, yeah. Well, he, he passed. Tim Zachary. Zachary mm. We all know him. He passed many years ago. So his so wife came on the TV and she said, oh, this woman that just came to me and she said, oh, Pastor, Pastor Riva, what pie does your husband like? And she goes, my husband like pie, pie. She touched all the parts of the body. She said, that, those are all the pies my husband like. You, and the reason why she might have said that is that the, the, he was a very handsome guy. The women in the church were bugging her husband. And the Bible says, elite has not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. But there are some people, they lead the men into temptation. Mm -hmm. Not only the men, there are some women also. Some women lead the men into temptation, some men lead the women into temptation. But when it comes to our profession, we should draw the line. Mm -hmm. We should know our parameters. We should keep it professional, period. Keep mm -hmm. it professional. I was listening to, I was reading an article about CNN. A, a couple of months ago, CNN boss had to step down. Why? He stepped down because during Cuomo's issue, mm -hmm. um, Cuomo's brother, <coughs> excuse me, had to step down. Mm -hmm. We all know about it. Cuomo's yeah. brother was on CNN. He had mm -hmm. to step down. And, uh, uh, not, was it Andrew? I yeah, forgot Andrew his name. Cuomo. He had to step down. Chris Cuomo. So when the, uh, the, the CEO of CNN was also involved in a relationship with somebody in the office. He had to step down at the back, uh, behind the scenes. So we must know professionalism. If it's not allowed in the world, why should we allow it in the kingdom? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of um, lack of self-control in the, in the kingdom. So when, when it comes to our profession, allow your husband to function in his profession but your husband must also know his limit and you must also know your limit don't do it too much okay we've closed from church your wife is sitting in the car two hours three hours with the kids and you're counseling what counseling is that <laughs> the bible says that if you're not able to take care of your home hmm. yeah what do you call it that infidel yeah, fed up, yeah. so you must be able give time don't overdo it let's let's put limits parameters when we go to work we close and most of this spiritual work sometimes you're not even paid for it so why do you neglect your family hmm. put your family at the back and take care of people who 
when there is problem, they point their fingers at you. They all run away. So let's just be careful in how we do our job. Let me hand over to Apostle. <laughs> Thank you, Mom. Uh, I know we've uh, kind of limited our scenario to us because we had a case study. Mm -hmm. but, but I want to step out a little bit because uh, there are a lot of people that might be listening to us right now will listen to the recorded version who are not necessarily pastors, but they are married and might be having real issues to deal with. And so uh, I want to step out and talk briefly about that as we get into the closing moment. Um, you know, uh, for instance, you know, we're talking about spouses that are possessive. Uh, my wife displays possessiveness, but it is possessiveness that comes from a loving place. Now, it, the, the most terrible possessiveness you could have is one that is founded on insecurity. My wife doesn't feel insecure. And of course, it is what you do as a spouse that makes the other spouse feel insecure mm -hmm. and causes them to now begin to be possessive. Of course, there are other spouses that are possessive uh, with no reasons. They are just possessive. And there are some too that are possessive because of insecurity. So whatever the case is, I think that possessiveness uh, can impact a relationship negatively. Now, for instance, I, I can tell you within a day when I'm going to work, my wife can tell me maybe about 10 times I'm waiting for you. <laughs> and sometimes I just started working. Now, when she says that, what I'm hearing is that I miss you. Mm. I'm not hearing I'm possessive. Of course, I'm I miss not you. hearing that <laughs> I feel insecure. <laughs> but I know what she means by that. She misses me. She can't wait for me to come home. Even sometimes on my way home, it takes me about an hour and a half to get home driving. And I stay on the phone throughout with her. And almost every 10 minutes, we're doing, where have you got into? You know, ah, but you do the same thing. You even do worse. Really? really? Yeah. <laughs> I hope what she said didn't go on air. It's a no. microphone on. It's not <laughs> no, we had it. <laughs> well, I guess we all do it. But again, it's not because of insecurity. It's just love. You can't wait to be in each other's company. And uh, again, there are people that feel insecure. Of course, if you are spending all your time traveling and doing all these kind of things with other people rather than your spouse you create a, a, an environment that creates insecurity especially if you go we could go for hours your spouse is calling you they don't know where you are and it becomes a lifestyle it creates insecurity where are you what is happening at this time of the night when i'm calling you and you're not picking up hmm. now i can tell you confidently that the 25 years we've been together 99.9 percent .9 of the time i don't go anywhere without my wife and she doesn't go anywhere without me mm. the, it, you would hardly see me at any church event without my, my my spouse or the other way around we go everywhere i don't go to any event with any church member and i don't care if it's a man or a woman without my wife because these days it's not even just about the opposite sex because people are doing outrageous things <laughs> And so if you're a spouse, you're listening to me. The Bible says the two shall become one. Stop dividing yourself and using the kids as the excuse. And wife, don't use the kids as excuse. Bring them along. Do the best that you can. I can tell you that there was a period of about five years that on my wife's off day, she goes to work with me. And sometimes I work 10 hours and she's sitting in a chair in the, in the car for 10 hours waiting for me to close. She did that for many years. And it's not because she wants to make sure that I'm not talking to any girl. She just wants to hang out with me. And sometimes five, seven times I will come out. My lunch break, I'll come into the car, we'll eat together in between. I'll come spend 10, 15 minutes chat. How are you doing? What are you doing? She's busy doing her stuff, her media things, her website, her flyers. She always has so much to do, just like me. But then again, for us, that, is, that was our hangout. She's off. I'm working on that day. We spend time together. The time we spent one and a half hours driving to the city and the same time spending driving together, it was a catch-up time for us. Mm -hmm. And in between, while she's waiting for me, and I can tell you she did this for maybe five to six years. 
And it's nothing to do with suspicion or uh, wondering what I'm doing at work. None of those mm -hmm. things is purely a catch-up time for us. And we use that as a beautiful time, you know, to, 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 you know, build a relationship. And like I said before, relationship, relationship or marriage is work. And you got to get your hands dirty if you want to see this thing work. Also, it's not all the days that there was a peace do. Sometimes we do fight, but, you know, we made up and made this work. Amen to that. <laughs> Amen. Amen to that. Amen. I think we should take some questions. Yes. Yeah, Apostle, let's talk about spending time together and then we leave it for everybody to ask their question. Spending time together is very important. Apart from we spending, I know that every uh, relationship is peculiar to whatever is happening within it, right? But as marital couples, or any relationship that you are into. I believe that every month you should be able to spend two hours, a minimum of two hours between husband and wife, where you can go out, talk about stuff, be played, be open. If you can open your body to a man, why can't you open your ears and listen to her? Hmm. You want everything about her, but you don't want her voice. We should be open. Talk about our relationship, talk about our children, talk about our financial situation, talk about our plans. We must have smart goals, which I know most of you know, specific, measurable, attainable, mm -hmm. realistic, and timely. <coughs> and, <coughs> excuse me, between Apostle and myself, every year, we write down our smart goals and we share it. These are my smart goals. These are your smart goals. And we talk about it among the two of us and how we are going to achieve it. And we have, we help each other structure it, which is very important. So you, when we sit down, we talk, I ask him, or he asked me, Bill, have you been able to achieve your goals? The first three months, have you been able to achieve it? If I've not been able to achieve it, he helps me. We bring out the reasons why we've not been able to achieve it are we paying our bills how much do we have you know we, we need to be open you need mm -hmm. to talk know what is happening between you you shouldn't have different agendas one person building home in ghana where you are living in an apartment in the bronx where you are so squished up and the the apartment you 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 can't even breathe and you are building a mansion in ghana mm -hmm. or mansion back home somewhere mm -hmm. why don't you have <coughs> excuse me Better living here, better relationship, build yourself up here, develop your kids here, have a good life here. And then when the two of you feel that it's time, you plan together and you have another home. I know where uh, relationships where the man wants to buy a car, the woman don't agree, the, the woman wants to buy a car, the man don't agree. But we know that there is a need. Let's put our resources together. Let's see who needs it the most. It's always good to, to be able to reason together. That's what the Bible says. Come, let us reason together. And as couples, we need to be able to reason together. Have a relationship. Spend time and know what we are doing. Have things in common. Have a common vision. All right. So with that said, I think um, it's almost 9 o'clock. So I'm sure... We'll pick up some questions. Okay. Then uh, probably I'll, ask, I'll ask the last question. <clears throat> then if anybody has any question, please feel free to post it in the comment section. Um, but I had another backstage question. Um, and this person was saying that um, I should still ask because it, it's tied in what you said. So um, the work of the, the, the man is such that um, she's always with, um, she works with the youth. So the youth are always coming around. Oh, brothers, uh, maybe uncle so and so I need help with this. Uncle so and so I need help with this. And the wife is not comfortable with that. Um, she knows that he's doing the work of God, but she's also not comfortable with the way, you know, now the girls, if you don't even take it, they can even accuse you of harassment and all that. So she wants to protect her husband she wants to know what kind of boundaries she can put around to protect her marriage and also not be too uh, not restrict the man from doing what he has to do 
Well, that's a good question. I mean, uh, like last week I said that there was a reason why Jesus met a woman at a well in an open place. <laughs> and there was a reason why Jesus met Nicodemus at night. And so we must choose our locations. Um, you know, one of the things that was fundamental to me as a pastor, even starting off, uh, I, can, I can say I've practiced this for well over 20 years, where it's a principle. Apostle doesn't give right to anybody. I will give you money to take Uber. You're not coming into my car, period. I'm not having counseling with my office door closed, period. So, so there are fundamental boundaries that everybody must set. Mm -hmm. Now, if I'm dealing with a youth and I, there is a reason not to do this project with my wife, I mean, the ideal situation it will be to do this uh, work with my wife. But if it's not possible, then how can I do it in a safe environment? Do I take one kid at a time or I take the kids in a group? Is there any way I could have a video recording of our activities? Wherever we decide to have these meetings, can I set up a video or a camera there that records everything that we do? Mm have some kind of uh, protection in place for you as uh, a youth counselor, a youth leader, whatever you are doing. Because uh, at the end of the day, when you have not even touched anybody, a kid can turn around and say, you did touch them. We know how mm -hmm. the laws goes in America. It's first yeah. children, women, dogs, and then men. So if you are not careful, before it gets to you, you'll be in jail <laughs> for 50 years already before they even call your case. So I would say find a way of having some kind of measures in place that protects you. Whether it's camera, is having somebody in the room. These days, doctors don't go into the room to meet a patient alone. They come mm -hmm. with a second person. Mm -hmm. And that is to create a witness. Mm -hmm. So you must do the same thing as a counselor, or as a youth leader. Have an assistant who goes everywhere with you. So you don't have a situation where you're having an encounter with any youth all by yourself. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I think because of our time, we will end it here. Yeah. <laughs> but you've shared a lot. I just want to clarify um, what Mami said. She said, spend, is it spend two hours every month? That's a minimum. Minimum. Okay. Spend minimum yeah. two hours every month. Have open conversations, which is very, very important. Yep. Okay. I don't know if you have your final words for us before we go. We leave tonight. Mommy, you have any final words or you want me to go? All right. Uh, she's giving me the green light to do the talking. Um, so my, my final thoughts are this, that as married couples find a common ground, where is a common ground? And to solidify your marriage, uh, find what God brought the two of you to do together. Because if you are just going to be thriving on emotions, I'm sexually attracted to you. I want to hang out with you. I want to go to dinner with you. I want to have sex with you. I want to travel with you. If that is all you see with a relationship, that relationship is not going to last. There has to be a divine reason why the two of you are together. Is it a career? Is it business? Is it ministry? There must be something ordained of God for the two of you that must be discovered. You know, so when sex ends, that will still stick around. When the romance is over, that will stick around because all these other things are emotional things that cannot be sustained. But you know what? When it comes to the work God is giving the two of you, Bible says even in death, your work goes with you. Mm -hmm. And so that is the only thing we're going to show up in heaven. When we stand before the Lord, he will say, Thou good and faithful servant, come into my rest. Because the two of you join together and you fulfill the work God put you together to do. Remember, God gave Adam a job to do. And when he was done, he was tired, he came home. God looked at that man and said, It's not good for this guy to be doing this work alone. I'm going to make him a help meet. So the fundamental reason for marriage was somebody that will come in and help the man accomplish the work God had called a man to do. And so if you haven't discovered that work and it's all about emotions, dinners, going out and cruises, that marriage is not going to last. There has to be a foundation. And that foundation is God's purpose for the two of you. 
what is it that God wants the two of you to fulfill? It could be a product. God is giving the two of you to take it to a whole new level. It could be a calling. It could be something unique, a service God wants the two of you to accomplish. And if you're a husband and wife and you've not yet discovered it, cry out, pray, seek the face of God and find out one thing. That would be the biggest crazy glue that mm. holds this relationship together. Well, I was typing. <laughs> I was tapping something you said that marriage is not all about cruising and enjoying and like enjoyment, but um, finding God's purpose for the two of you. Right? I was trying to type that down. Yes. Thank Praise you God. so much. Thank you so much for sharing again, sharing your crowns and your scars. That was the word I was Amen. looking for. Yes. God bless you. My husband was Pastor Franz was saying the two of you are not typical Africans. <laughs> Wait, now what? Typical Africans, typical Africans, because oh, you've really? opened up yourself. Yes, yeah, the way you've opened up yourself. Like I said, usually <laughs> they will show the crowns and how nice they are in front of the camera and everybody, okay. but they don't tell us what happens at home. So. <laughs> Amen. So, so I'm a mentor to a lot of people. Yes, you are. And my principle is that if you're going to be my general or my mentor, I need to see your scars. Mm -hmm. Because the master general, Jesus, has scars to show right. in his palm. I, I am very suspicious of people who are mentors who make you believe that they are perfect. They've never made a mistake <laughs> before. I don't want you to be my leader, mm -hmm. my mentor. I want a mentor, a general that has scars because mm -hmm. the master himself has cars mm -hmm. and so everybody is flawed right. and uh, if you want to mentor me you have to show me your flaws your mistakes <laughs> your scars so that i can learn from it mm -hmm. and i believe that is exactly what we've done here tonight to show you where we got we got it wrong and we had to learn and you know get it right yeah by the mm -hmm. grace of god i also mm -hmm. say that every porter mm -hmm. when molding the clay comes into contact with a lot of rocks mm -hmm. and to get the, the products to be perfect mm. you need to take out the rocks particles. and the, the pebbles the particles the particles you need to take it out to make the uh, smooth the product smooth so if you don't take out the particles which we have shown tonight the product will not be smooth right. we cannot just tell you about the smooth product without the particles it's important people need to know people are suffering mm -hmm. relationships are struggling yeah. a lot and people are crying inside mm -hmm. it we don't want it to be like that lady who was killed a musician mm -hmm. no we want people to get better and we want people to also be able to endure and persevere in right. relationship because there is no perfect relationship that's why we open up and we share believe believe you me we are okay sharing it and it's, it's not going to create any friction between us we are just oh, good no. okay and we'll have a good time <laughs> but honestly <laughs> i'm surprised you also do code code wall so i thought it was only <laughs> me and pastor francis you thought it's only pastor francis yes <laughs> every marriage does every it marriage. the only thing is that they don't stay Usually, I'm the one that starts it. He will know. He will keep talking to you, and I will keep, I mean, ignoring him. <laughs> so, I had a joke recently, <laughs> and it was funny. You know, uh, the reason why he's the one, you know, trying to make peace, and, and most of the time, the men will make peace. They said, it's only in marriage that a woman is wrong, <laughs> and she won't apologize She'll come and sleep by you naked. And then you, the one who is upset, you will do the apology yourself. <laughs> the apology they were supposed to do, they won't do it. They'll come they and sleep it. by you naked. And now you yourself, you have to apologize yourself. We are powerful. <laughs> you guys are very powerful. Yes. <laughs> Yes, um, Dickin Kwekubwati says, in-depth teaching. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much, Amen. Daddy and Mommy, for sharing with us. Again, thank you for um, all the information, you know, ch sharing your personal life stories with us. We've learned a lot. I've learned a lot from, and I know Pastor Francis has learned a lot too, and all the, <laughs> all the young men and young women and all the um, fathers and mothers here also watching us. So, 
Um, we really appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you so much for being a blessing Thank to us. Thank you very much for having us. Thank you as always. It's always a blessing. Thank you. Do you have any... I know there is an upcoming graduation, if you want to talk about it briefly. Yes, the graduation is going to be on 25th. And um, as many of you that have taken courses or intend to take courses, I would encourage you to join in. Legacy Life University is a school that is modeled in a unique way. Our courses are biblical and uh, our courses are theological leadership and business. So if you are thinking along those lines, this is the school for you. It's virtual classroom. Uh, our fees are subsidized. They are next to nothing. So uh, I would encourage you to go on our website and uh, review what we have and, you know, sign up to take some of the courses, whether you want to do a certificate course, a one course, you know, bachelor's degree, master's or doctorate, whatever you intend to do. I would encourage you to go to our website, LegacyLifeU.org, and uh, review some of our courses. We have a free seminar coming after the graduation, so you could stand by. We are yet to determine the date and information will be sent. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing that. And yes, I mean, they really subsidize the cost. So it's really, really um, low on the budget for now. Don't take advantage be before they increase it. So thank you, Daddy and Mommy, for always being a blessing to us, to the body of Christ, to the community, and also to the world at large. We really appreciate you. So we we'll allow you to go. Thank you very much for and having have us. more dinner. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, we're going for dinner. Yes, yes. <laughs> Bye. Have Bye. mercy on me. <laughs> more grace. <laughs> oh my goodness. Such power, power couple. <laughs> Thank you so much. And they, they still have the steam. You know, when you meet them personally, you'll be like they just got married. We've, we've had experience. We have the chance to share with them. I mean, um, being in bond and being uh, close, uh, how do you call uh, acquaintance with them, right? We share time with them and they are amazing. They don't just, they are not just coming to tell us things on script but they are really very lovely couple to be with you know and i really um i've enjoyed so much and thank you for sharing all that you share with us sharing your scars with us and we really would make you all proud with our marriages your sharing with us tonight will not be in vain but we'll make you proud so thank you for being mentors to us and then all the young men and women who follow you all the, the young pastors all the um, young adults everyone even grown-ups when you go to their church, they are um, grown-ups, you know, um, older, older women and men there, and they mentor them. So it shows how blessed they are. I mean, how a blessing they are to the body of Christ. So really appreciate you. So on this note, I sign out. As you know, mo tomorrow morning, we have um, uh, heavily due with Dr. Harrison, and then in the evening, in the evening, uh, Apostle is going to come on again. We have a weekly um, telecast with him every Monday, 5 p.m. He reminds me so much of uh, Dr. Miles Moreau, Blessed Memory, and also T.D. Jakes. I was telling my husband, he's like a, uh, our own T.D. Jake in our community. So um, listen to him more often and you'll be blessed. You know, he, he, he speaks to so much open-mindedness and he takes the, the, the Bible from another perspective that we don't usually hear. And they are very profound and we are very, um, we, I mean, with, I mean, wise filled. So listen to him, watch him, follow him on YouTube, um, Legacy, uh, Life Legacy Chapel. Follow him um, on Love Legacy Chapel on YouTube. And also every time, Monday, 5 p.m. on, on Mondays. We have Man at Noon running Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 1 p.m. with our uh, with Bishop Oyedepo, Bishop Bempa, and also Apostle Selma. They, they, we telecast their, uh, we broadcast their, their sermons here that you can listen to and be empowered, you know. In the end time, the Bible said, uh, many, the love of many will grow cold. So that is why FBN is here, to help empower your faith. When you are confused, you, you have so many things going on, you don't know which one to believe, come on to FBN and you'll be blessed. So follow us, like our pages, um, follow us and you always be blessed. On Saturdays, we have the youth show. Uh, Friday evening, we have Pastor Derek Osei-Bobie and also Pastor uh, Kwame. 
And then on Saturday, we have the You Talk with Miranda. And then Sunday, we have Gospel City. We're starting a new series on um, supernatural, prophetic, supernatural, uh, angelic ministration, demonic ministration. We're going to talk more about that in the coming weeks. So stay tuned. Next week, we're going to have Pastor Nor Prophet Norris with us next week. And I I'm sure that that is going to come back. Prophet uh, Apostle Shadows is going to come on one of the nights to teach us about some of these things when it comes to the supernatural. So uh, keep following us. Keep um, liking, sharing, and the Lord is going to use us to bless you in different ways. So thank you so much for joining me tonight. It's always a blessing being your host. I sign out. God bless you. Let your presence fall. Let your presence fall.